Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for our webinar on green safaris. I'm joined today by Roz Hine, um, who is Business Development Manager for Green Safaris, and she's going to be presenting us um, all the camps today and the circuit and talking about um, the offers we've got on at the moment um, and kind of updating on everything. Um, the webinar is being recorded. We'll be sending out the recording um, in the next couple of days with um, kind of the full Green Safaris agent kit and everything you need. Um, if you do have questions throughout the webinar, please pop them in the Q&A um, and we will get to those at the end um, and we can answer anything um, that may not have been covered during the webinar. And of course, Roz, myself, and for anyone in the US, Dave um, from Karting Gina um, representatives um, who rep Green Safaris in the US, we're all here um, for your questions, um, you know, anytime, so um, outside of the webinar. But I'll pass over to Roz um, and she can get us started. Thanks, Alice. I really appreciate it. And thanks for, to all of you for taking time out of your busy day to join me and learn more about our exciting product in wonderful uh, countries. Um, so first and foremost, um, of course now my presentation is, oh, there we go, okay. So just to talk a little bit about who Green Safaris is, um, Green Safaris is sort of the brainchild of Vincent. He lives in the Netherlands. Um, he's the first property he ever built was Illa um, in a central Kafui where he lost his heart to. Um, and he still has his heart in. Um, and when he built that lodge, he realized the need to um, look at conservation projects, not just inside the park, because obviously we do that in supporting all projects, uh, but to look at outside the park. Like, so looking at communities, how do we create security within communities around water, around food, around health, education, um, and in doing so, uh, also providing renewable energy rather than chopping down trees. So in doing so, assisting the fact that they don't need to rely on poaching as well as uh, deforestation. Um, so it's a really, really large part of what we do as Green Safaris. Um, we have a whole found, a website that's dedicated to the Green Safaris Foundation. We have an audited report you can get off our website. Um, that uh, gives you the snapshots. We do audit it. We're about to sign off on the 2023 audit. So you can see that what we say we're doing, we actually are doing. Um, and um, yeah, your clients can immerse themselves in any of those uh, projects uh, as they come along. We will be producing a more of a, a detailed PDF document that you to support to the agents so that you can actually talk to your clients uh, before they arrive or why booking Green Safaris. So Illa being the first property, let's get straight into it, in central Kafui. Um, Kaya Mawa was the next property to be bought, which is um, in Lake Malawi. Um, and then Tongabizi uh, down in Livingston was the next property. Um, during 2021, he um, launched Shower and Chizza. And then now in July last year, well, actually May last year, we finalized our deal in purchasing sausage tree and potato bush which is wonderful because it sort of does a whole circle um, where back in the day, and I've worked, I worked at Tongabizi for over 15 years. Um, Tongabizi, Ben used to own Sausage Tree uh, and, and James Lightfoot, um, who owned Kaimawa was his brother-in-law. And even when Jason Mott took over as the owner of these two products, Ben was still a shareholder in these properties. So it's wonderful that they're now all back together and in the green spores. Um, portfolio. So we're very excited about that. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about um, um, is the Wings and Wheels incentive that we've launched. Um, I'll come back to that now. So the Wings and Wheels incentive that we've launched for 2024 is um, if you're booking four nights or more uh, at any of our properties, so it doesn't have to be four nights at one property, we will include the flights or the flights are included in our rates that you see on our rate sheets. So basically, we cover everything for, for you. So it makes it very easy for you to book the product. Um, we have our meet and greets in Lusaka, Tours of Africa. We have a lounge there. Um, so that's also obviously the hub for people coming in and out of properties, coming in off international airport, uh, air flights. So they do our meet and greets there, and that's included in our, our rates. We have a lounge in Livingston Airport and our plain side meet and greets there, which is unique to us. Um, we also have our plain side meeting greets in Ilongwe, 
And then we have Fanny that does our meet and greets in Mifui, and obviously our rangers do our meet and greets um, at the various airstrips. So um, the rates itself include the park fees, the airport taxes, the meet and greets, your flights, your accommodation, your meals, your activities, your, um, and accommodation. So it's so easy to quote now. You're just taking a couple of nights there, a couple of nights there, a couple of nights there, you put it together and you know that you're covered from end to end. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. But interestingly, um, you know, you're not more than uh, between an hour to two, two hours away from each destination. So connecting them all is very, very easy. So Victoria Falls is obviously where Tom Beasy and Cinder Beasy is. And on top of that, we also um, have the uh, rights for Livingston Island. Uh, which has been going for many, many years. And um, so just for those of you who don't know the falls, uh, this side is um, Zimbabwe and this side is Zambia. There's always a lot of hype around what's the best side to see the falls. Um, well, th there's various reasons for you wanting to be on either side. But for us, you know, during high water, and you can see it quite nicely here, we are a little bit further further back from the falls. So you get those wonderful uh, photographic opportunities here. There's a little bridge that crosses there, which is quite fun. Um, in low water, yes, the water does slow, because of the topography of the river, um, it does all tend to channel into this section here. So actually the falls is only coming over on this side. Um, and that happens uh, from about, let's think about that. Um, we open up Livingston Island in July. So you're looking at probably September, October, and then it start, the water starts to rise again. September, October reaches its lowest. Um, but of course, seeing the falls in low water, uh, going to Livingston Island in low water is um, a must. I think the best way to see the falls because you get to swim in the falls. Um, so uh, interestingly, a lot of our business, about 60% of our business for Livingston Island comes from Zimbabwe. So at some point you're gonna cross the falls into the Zambia anyway and vice versa. So we do offer tour of the falls onto the Zim side. And then of course, you've got your Livingston Island uh, uh, on the Zambian side. So why Zambia? Well, um, having um, traveled and sold this for many, many years, I am a constant believer that Zambia has probably the most unspoilt, amazing, incredible parks um, with a major, major variety in them. Um, you're not all about just being on a vehicle and going on safari. There's river activities, there's spa activities, um, there's, there's so much fishing, there's so much to do around safari, not just being on a vehicle. Um, and that, I believe, um, Zambia offers. Every single park is completely different. So even if you sold your clients three nights in each park, they would find something completely unique and different in every single park. Obviously, we've got the Victoria Falls, which is wonderful, um, and then easy access in and out. And then, of course, ending with a nice beach destination in Malawi, which is a true African beach destination, is just the cherry on the top for us. Also, you don't get that crush of vehicles that you get in some areas as well. You, you, um, I was in November in the Basanga Plains, and there was only the two of uh, two, uh, our two vehicles as well in that area. Why green safaris? Well, I told you a little bit about our ethos and where we come from. But we feel we do offer uh, the top lodges in all the major parks and at Victoria Falls, the dream extension into Malawi, end to end, making it very easy for you to sell it. And of course, um, we are innovative in our um, sustainable approach. You know, we have, we're the only operators in Zambia to have silent vehicles and silent boats. We've just recently launched our first e dow boat uh, in Tongabizi, which it's actually amazing when you're on it, you suddenly realize, oh, this boat's moving and you didn't even know it. You're not hearing the noise of the engine. Um, and to now that we've piloted that project, that will start rolling out into our other, into our other regions. Um, we've got projects up in Kafui which build dams to enable, because Zambia gets a lot of rain during the rainy season, but then the rest of the year it's dry. So to try and create water security all year round and be able to produce food all the way, all year round for their communities, they've learned how to produce out built with our projects dams that still allow free flow of water, but then just allows the water to stay. And then in doing that, they're able to create crops more and they do chicken farming, rabbit farming, pig farming, all of this to try and create an alternative source of food. So there's a lot of discussion around sustainable circuit. Uh, reforestation projects, offsetting your carbon footprints, all of that is part and parcel of what we do. It's also how we build our lodges as well. Uh, that's just an image of our silent boat at Illa. 
Um, so, so Tonga Bisi down here, um, this is the Musiantunya National Park. Um, our main airport, obviously, is uh, here in Livingston, which is about a 35 minute drive to the lodge. We do have to go a little bit slower through the park, which so from a distance perspective is not that far, but we do have to slow down to about 40 going through the park. Um, Victoria Falls Airport, we are exactly, and I've timed it, I've done it myself, an hour and a half door to door. From there, and uh, Kasani, and now with the new bridge, is also about an hour and a half as well. So uh, we have three hubs that you can utilize to get to us. The lovely thing about us is we're far away from the, not far away, it's about 30 minutes to the falls. Um, but we don't have the noise above us uh, with the helicopters and the micro lights. We're on a pristine area. We have a beautiful island across from us that we use for our sandbars and picnics, etc. cetera. Um, and um, we're also the only ones to have received the go-ahead to do proper setups in the falls during the lunar rainbow. We set up canopies and drink station and your valets are there um, helping you while you enjoy the lunar rainbow. And we're the only ones also to have that. Any guest who comes and stays with us also gets a free trip to Livingston Island. Uh, obviously during season, there is I think in May only that we close. Uh, but that was very dependent on the water level. Sometimes we do have to close earlier or open later. But generally speaking, um, we try to get any, everybody onto those falls as well. But, you, but if you're staying with us, it's included in your rates. So Tonga Bisi, um, when Ben built this years ago, his whole idea is he wanted to immerse himself in the river. And you can see it in the way that the lodge has been built. You can open everything up. You can, you can see this incredible uh, uh, river. The sunsets over it are magnificent. It's very hypnotic. Um, so he didn't want to close everything in uh, with glass. He wanted to stay true to what an African lodge should be. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, African um, furnishings and decor, especially around our skill centers in, in, in supporting them. Um, and, but it's still with that modern feel. So it's, um, it's, it's really is a stunning lodge, I, I, I believe. We're never going to be, um, you know, lots of chrome, lots of concrete, uh, et cetera, like that. We, we more that wooden authentic style built up off the ground, obviously considering the earth and our carbon footprint on Earth as well. It is the only lodge to have electricity. We inherited it like that. Um, so there is air conditioner all the way through. The other thing that we, we're known for is the fact that we do have valets, that you do have, all the dining is around private dining. So it's an activity, whether you're on an electric dial boat having your lunch with an umbrella chugging down the river, whether you're on a sand uh, uh, pan, which are these um, decks that we moor 100 meters offshore and you can have breakfast or dinner on them. Uh, gets a bit too hot during the day to do lunch. Um, we do these picnics on the islands. Um, we do private dining in all the rooms or, or, or on any of our decks. We have four main areas. It's not one main area where everybody eats breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, it's a very much around the romance and the privacy. But we also invite families. Children of all ages can come, and we do have family accommodation where children can actually uh, you know, make a noise because they're not in the main areas around honeymooners. So... Um, we do our cater for, for everyone. Um, that's just giving you an overview. So Five River Cottages, which is our standard entry level, uh, open front of treehouse, if somebody wants to be adventurous and have something out of the box. Um, luxury houses, uh, which all have plunge pools, and then two bedroom family units, as I said, that have also plunge pools. Um, Tangala House is a four bedroom villa and very popular with multi-generational travel or two families traveling together. They get to have that private as well. There's no closure and our high season does follow the safari green season. Um, this is just an image of our river cottage. I could be here for an hour talking about all of the different room types. So please do have a look at the agent's portal or the website uh, where you can actually spend some time looking and seeing every single room type. But these are the river cottages. That image of the, of the um, lunch on the deck was taken from one of our river cottage decks, but they do not have plunge pools. Um, honeymoon house, there's dog house, there's bird house, there's nut house. Goodness knows why they were all named that, but um, that's a whole nother discussion. Um, this is dog house. This is a room here. We've got another room across the way. It's all connected with walkways with its own plunge pool and lounge dining area. When you're staying in here with four people, you do get your own private boat and vehicle, et cetera, as well. And the chef can come down and do um, serve the dinners, et cetera, in here. But again, we also set up for private dining in the other rooms. 
This is the garden house that's set back. Um, I like to show this image because this is one of the deco items that comes from our skill center of Kayamawa. So a lot of the uh, chandeliers, recycled glass chandeliers, termite mud chandeliers, teething bead chandeliers, seed pod chandeliers or lights or lampshades all come from there. And then of course, um, our little cushion covers that they do and table runners, et cetera. So there's a lot of support for our skill centers. This is the tree house. Um, I, I love this room. I think it's very romantic. Um, and then Tangala House. And then um, a little bit downstream, we have Sindabizi, which is a private island. It's got five chalets. One is the Honeymoon Chalet. It has a private beach in front of it and slightly bigger than the other rooms. Also has a ball and claw bath. There is one of the other chalets that also has a ball and claw bath. Um, it's really amazing in high water you sometimes feel like you're on a boat because the water is rushing past you and you feel like the, the island's moving. It's really an amazing uh, feeling. And again, when he built it, it was trying to still create that feeling of privacy. So there's little decks all over the place. So even if you are a couple of couples on the island, there are places where you can still have your own private meals, etc. if you don't want to be part of a group. Um, it's just got uh, launched. It's, we have a new launch site uh, close to the island. Before, you couldn't come off the island at night because you had to get back to Tom Beasy to get off, and hippos and crocs obviously move at night. Um, but now we've launched, put a launch site closer, and now we can take guests on and off at night. It's bush camp style. Uh, again, you have valets, the same inclusions and exclusions you would get at any of the other, uh, at Tonga Beasy. Also part of the wings and wheels. Um, but it's bush camp style. We do have these drop downs that come down. So guests can ask to have everything up or everything down. Um, completely up to you. And we do, we're very close to the national park here. So we do often get elephants and hippo and buffalo, et cetera, coming down. So although this is not a proper safari destination, they do get to see some of those animals uh, from Sindhavisi Island as well. But also if you're on any of our sundowner cruises or fishing, you can get to see that as well. So these are the sand pans that we were. We've actually put a, a wooden fringe around it now to um, hide the pontoons underneath. But this is what I'm talking about, the floating, floating platform where you have your breakfast or your lunches on. And then Livingston Island. Um, this here is um, Devil's Pool. Um, over, actually, it's over there where my little hand is. Um, so you walk along, they do a little tour of the island, tell you about where Dr. Livingston first viewed the falls, and then you get to swim a lot along um, at the back here. We've got two guide ropes or safety ropes. We've never, ever, we've got a 100% safety record uh, on this island. Um, and then you get across and the guides take you and you have a little swim if you want to. Um, and then we have three morning breezes. We have a lunch and a high tea. Uh, the breezes serve breakfast, obviously lunch and high tea is self-explanatory. And then in, in certain times when it's really low water, you can also book a walking tour from the uh, entrance of the falls across to um, the island as well. That's just a picture. Uh, and there's Alice <laughs> in the pool swimming. Um, this is Zimbabwe there in the background. Sausage tree and potato bush. Um, you know, I absolutely love it. Um, the opposite us in Zimbabwe's mono pools, but again, completely different, simply because we have a mountain range that sits sort of halfway up here. And so the game is sort of captured between the mountain range and the, and the river. Um, so you get to see absolutely incredible game. Um, and once I had spent 10 days here in, in out the park, and once I got into the park, I actually understood why you wanted to be in the park. There's a lot of game that comes down. So while you're fishing, which has got the best tiger fishing in the world, or you're on a, a, a cruise or you're having, uh, we have this, we, one of our USPs is we have this lunch where you sit with your, on a sand bank or bar, whatever you want to call it, with your feet in the water. And they have this white marquee over you. Um, but even while you're there, you can see elephants crossing and uh, buffalo and water buck. And it's just got this beautiful, amazing park-like feel when you come into it um, from the airports. We use Jackie Airstrip in, um, in season. Outside season, we use the Royal Airstrip. But either way, you enter the, into the lodge by boat, and it's quite an incredible entrance. And you get to see all these herds of buffalo and elephant that are sitting in these park-like places close to the river. Um, but absolutely stunning game during here as well. And plus, as I said, you've got that whole other element around the other activities that you can do there. It's only 30 minutes from Lusaka, so it's very, very easy to get into. Uh, we do open in uh, April. Our green season runs to the end of June, and then 1st of July, our high season. 
um, and then we run back into green season around, uh, but again, it could close a bit earlier around rains, but generally mid-November, we start to close uh, the, the lodges. Eight rooms, one of the new things we did introduce when we first opened board to this was the evening breezes that the sausage tree now has air conditioner. Uh, we take, you know, children from four years and up. The other USP it has is that we private vehicles, private boats for every single guest, both at Sausage Tree and at Potato Bush. Um, so that's just the deck. We've actually are, we are doing in low season now, our off season, a couple of amendments, bringing the deck forward and bringing our bar forward and dropping that wall. But, you know, just little stuff. It's actually such a stunning lodge already as it is. And this is the view that you're going to be getting um, when you're there. This is our rooms. Beautiful rooms that were refurbished in 2018. Um, and again, plunge pools, beautiful areas, stunning. Um, and then we have Potato Bush, which is sort of more a four-star camp, but we have a lot of uh, same um, um, dates as the other one. Four rooms, um, one's a family room, and then there's three other chalets. Um, we have a lot of buyouts here because of eight people, you can actually have the whole lodge. So again, thinking about um sole use you could have sundabizi sole use you could have tangala sole use and then you could have potato bush sole use um and we are redoing the screening on the whole of potato bush now also in the down season um but it's just a stunning lodge as well it's really beautiful that's the view of the family room every room also has a plunge pool also at potato bush and then coming up into illa um illa is built in the central um, Kafui, very easily accessible, um, but for wings and wheels, as I said, we use the Chunga airstrip. Um, it's, it really is, I mean, having spent last week there, the whole week on a conference there, uh, it really highlighted to me how beautiful this area is. Um, the, the lions seem to be huge. Uh, we did go and visit African Park Center. Panthera projects are based there, as well as up north and down south here in Teshi Teshi. Um, they're monitoring the, um, the, the carnivores as well as the carnivore project, which we all we support. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that you can do here around immersing yourself in, in the conservation projects or the community projects that is only about an hour from, from Illa. Um, unfortunately, Illa did burn down um, uh, last year and we've been in the process of rebuilding it. So. Um, I'll show you an image where we are because I took it off my camera. So please excuse the blurred image. We haven't got any professional pictures done yet. But the rooms were untouched. Our solar plant was untouched, thank goodness. And our silent boat, our silent vehicles. We use this boat a lot for private lunches. Again, the whole ethos around trying to make dining an activity. We have a floating spa here. So there you had a floating, uh, in Tongabis you had a floating dining, but here we had a floating spa. Beautiful pool that overlooks um, the Kifui Park. We do pontoon ourselves across or, or boat ourselves right across so we don't go through the gate. Unless it's a rainy season, then we will go through the gate. But in the, this town, we go straight across uh, into the Kifui, which is amazing. And there's beautiful floodplains close to us as well, which makes it easy from when we access straight across. So that's the image. Um, so when I show you Chisa, you'll understand the concept. So the actual um, uh, dining area and the lounge area, we've got a beautiful sun down a deck that's at the top here. This is your entrance coming in. Mimics the, the nests at Chisabizanga. And uh, they're absolutely huge. Um, we've actually com we've commissioned two huge um, recycled glass chandeliers that are coming in. And this lodge will be open um, on the 1st of March. Uh, for bookings. So it is still, obviously, you can see a work in progress. They're busy doing the cladding around um, the canvas structure um, using bamboo. Um, bamboo is grows very fast. Um, it's renewable. It's green. You're not chopping down trees. Um, so And it's very, very hardy. It uh, is one of the hardiest woods you can find. So they've decided to do the cladding with bamboo, uh, which is amazing. So I'm excited to see the rest of that. So uh, 10 tents, two family tents, children of all ages. Two of the rooms have a bath out on the deck. I'll show you now. But uh, we do open um, on in March um, due to the rains before that. Um, and our high season follows the main high season of the rest of the properties. So this is our tents, the ball and crawl bath. Um, and then again, again, another image of our silent boat. 
And then popping up to Chisel, which blew it. I've been there twice now, and every time it blows my mind when I go there. Um, it's a it's a lake that actually, or a swamp or a lake that actually, um, the water recedes in May, and then we open up in June. Um, and it's so the grass is so rich and nutritious; it attracts the games in their thousands into this area. And uh, it's like a little gem. Um, I don't know how anybody doesn't know about it. But I'm just going to tell you, we were there in November, five minutes in, we saw cheetah. The next five minutes, there was a leopard, then four lions trying to jump on a hippo, then another lion, with a leopard with a cub. Before we got into camp, then there were two leopard sightings the following morning and another 14 lions. And that's all in one day. Um, it was just mind blowing. And then we were the only two vehicles in the whole plains and they were silent safaris. So it's from an experience point of view, it was just mind blowing. And then also lots of other game there, the Puku, the Lechwe, the Rome, the Sable, um, a lot of other game that you don't see in other parks. So very, very unique. Um, if I had to describe it, I'd say it's probably a combination of the Serengeti and the Kwai area rolled into one, and, but that's not the vehicles. <laughs> Um, and they do, I, I read the, fam, the feedback forms that are coming in from guests and uh, we see the wild dogs coming um, a lot on the feedback forms. Well, look, we were there for one night, we didn't get to see them, but a lot of our guests see cheetah and wild dog amongst others as well. Only children from nine years, only four nests. We have one that's got a lift, run 100% of solar. We don't even have a generator here, built off the ground again around your carbon footprint and the idea of living in a nest. And now you'll see the concept of the of the nest versus what we've done at Ella as well. So creating synergy between the two properties. Um, it's very compact. We did introduce evening breezes here as well. So with the, now it has its air conditioner. Um, this black ball zips up. So that's your mosquito net. But we are looking at how we can, because it's a curved structure, as to how we can have a proper mosquito net also over the bed. But quite frankly, I have not had one guest say one thing to us about the mosquito nest. So uh, it's just something that we feel um, probably we need to do uh, around it. But uh, we stayed there. We never saw one mosquito. To be interesting. Even in November, when the day temperatures reach 40 at night, because you're on the plains, it cools down really nicely. So it's very comfortable. Uh, but the air breezes, obviously, during the day are a, are a huge plus. So shower, basin, toilet, very compact and, and, and living. Um, that's just some imagery of our vehicles, etc. The main area, because it's only eight people at any one time, it's four to a vehicle. Um, it's very small, very on point with our service. Uh, we try to keep a little bit of authenticity around safari. So the cooking of your toast over the fire and having a kettle there in front of you is, is part of that. But... Um, the actual lodge itself um, is beautifully done, all with natural fibers, again, sitting in with the green idea. There's no, you'll see here, there's no permanent floor, so guests are encouraged to take off their shoes and walk barefoot. Um, somebody said to me the other day, oh, that's like barefoot luxury. I think that's a pretty overused term, but perfect for, for what, I, what she was saying. A um, lot of interactive cooking stations in front of you. We've actually introduced one at Illa as well in the dining area, right in the middle of the dining area. There's a square interactive cooking station. We have one here as well. So there's a lot of talk and chat to the to the chefs that are there. Um, because of our projects, we have a lot of farm to table organic food. They're very big into their fresh produce around vegetables and salads and uh, producing lots of vegetarian meals as well um, at all our camps. Um, so, yeah, just an amazing, amazing camp. Uh, even our swimming pool, we don't put chlorine and acid in because you don't want to be backwashing acid and chlorine into this pristine environment. So we use natural chemicals and we pump it every few days, uh, etc. We do have electric e-bikes as well that you can go and ride around the camp and get a little bit of exercise if you want, just a little bit of an interesting, quirky thing to do. Uh, we do a lot of beautiful, you know, romantic sundown things um in the bush uh, which was uh, amazing i know when we did it the lines started to move towards us so we all had to jump back in the vehicle and head to camp um so that was interesting and then shower so from a wings and wheel perspective moving around um we obviously try to do as many direct flights as possible um but sometimes we will have to go via soccer so what we do is at booking stage we can't confirm that route but we will map those routes 45 days out 
Um, and by that stage, we will have a, a good idea of who we're moving and how we're moving it. And obviously, we'll try and do as much direct. We do sometimes have um, refueling issues in Mifui. So we always like our agents to have a little disclaimer on the, if you are booking that direct flight, that there could be a possibility that your flight will get, be diverted to Lusaka if there are refueling issues in Mifui. It's only happened once last year since we took over in May uh, from Sausage Tree to, to Mifui. Um, Chisa and Mifui is too far. We do stop at Lusaka and then pick up. And then that's why the, the lounge is so important in Lusaka to make sure your, your clients are really comfortable and looked after. So South Luangwa, one of the best known parks as well of Zambia, um, the Luangwa River that runs through it, probably the most hippo and croc in the world in a, in a river. Um, so, so much so that we can't do river activities in this park. Um, it, because of it, there's a lot of sausage trees around. The hippos love sausage trees. They eat that fruit and they spread them. And that also then brings up the baboon population. And baboons tell you where predators are. So a very high concentration of predator sightings in this area as well. Uh, we are actually situated 40 minutes. Uh, look, to get from Mifui Airport down to some of the other resort parks can take three, four hours to drive. Uh, we are uh, we go outside and we are based here. It's 40 minutes from the airport. We don't go south because it can get a little congested around the um, gate area. And it, all the parks are public parks. And so it can get a little congested. So we try to stay and we stay up north. Uh, going into the Insefu sector, which we've carved our own road out into, and then uh, we do pontoon also or boat across to uh, right into South Rwanda, having our own direct access. Um, and that's quite important because if we are, when we do the wings and wheels, we own our own barons, which are four seaters, but we also do have the use of the pro charter fleet, but we also utilize the pro schedules if that works around flights. Um, and if you you know a pro charter schedule that comes in early morning or late evening, and to be able to get 40 minutes into your camp is quite important. Um, again, it's a small camp, only four, four uh, tented rooms, silent vehicles here as well. That's our swimming pool overlooking the Loango River. We utilize this a lot for our early morning breakfasts. Home to the walking safaris, which is famous for it. And actually, uh, it's, we also have these sundowners we do where the car mine bee eaters come in and nest. Um, and either, you know, breakfast, tea and coffee stop or late afternoon. If the late afternoon ones are also incredible, as well as the morning ones. And you get this amazing um, birds coming in, the hundreds of them coming into a nest. Uh, and they're, they're so colorful. It really is quite hypnotic to watch them. Um, again, very easy to access, four tents, children from nine and up, we have one family unit. Um, so again, as Chizza can also be taken sole use, so can shower. So again, we're following the pattern of either FITs, honeymoon families, or sole use. There's something for everyone all the way through. Uh, we are only opening in May this season. We tried to open in April last year, but it became quite tough to manage guys' expectations around what uh, with the wet season and the game drive. So we've only will only open in May. The idea is a 260 degree view of um the bush. So when you arrive up your stairs, you're getting you walk in and you're you just hit with this view of the Luangwa River in front of you. And it's up on, on a deck. Um, and they again, we've just introduced also the air breezes here, which are those they come over the beds. They're these white air conditioners that come over, can be run off solar. And now in this green season, we will be in uh, putting in the mosquito nets as well. We did also use the gauze here for mosquito nets. And it's not that the mosquito nets, mosquitoes are hectic. It's that if we do get rain in the next 48 hours in any reserve, the insects can be quite, quite a, a something. <laughs> so if you put a light on, your insects come. So having that mosquito net actually just helps clients not have the, um, the, the mosquitoes, uh, the bugs on them. Um, but that's only, and it only lasts for 48 hours and then they seem to disappear for some reason. And then, you know, if it rains again, then they come back again. So mainly during high season when we open, we don't get rain. So that doesn't really happen, but we still feel that we need to put them in. Um, so that's the view. This is the view of the family room. And no, nobody's ever fallen in the bath. I get asked that by agents all the time. No one's ever fallen in a bath. 
Um, in fact, our guests absolutely love it. And our valets are constantly running their bars for them because that's what we do also at Tonga. We run the bars when you come back from your activities, it's already run and it's bubble bath, et cetera. It's just a romantic thing that we do. These are the sausage trees, by the way, up here um, and the big sausage fruit that hangs off them. Um, some imagery. And then you leave after breakfast and by lunchtime you're in the coma. Very quick, our guys do the plain side meet and greets. If you want, and Nyasa Air does this for us. We are our minor shareholders in Nyasa. And you don't even get off the plane. If you're coming in from Fui, it's the same plane that carries on. Um, and you, you you don't even take your luggage off. You just take your passport, wander through immigration, which they help you do, jump back on the plane, and you're off again. Um, so it's very, very, very easy to, to get to. Um, 12 square kilometers, amazing, immersive um, visit with community that's incredible. Lots of projects on this island around reforestation, educating about overfishing, um, uh, young women's programs, supporting nursery schools and high schools. Um, we've introduced its own ferry that comes backwards and forwards to the island because the, the government ferry is very old. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so we've got a Kayamawa here in Domo House, which is a sole use villa like Tengala House is. Again, around the concept of sole use uh, is around the corner here. Kutunda, which is our skill center. Uh, Mango Drift, well, that's a backpackers, not really an international market, but we do have that. It, we inherited that when we purchased um, Sausage Tree, probably the most upmarket backpackers I've ever seen. Um, and then lots of schools that we support. Uh, Vincent comes in and spends a lot of time chatting to the chiefs and getting to know all of them and what they require. It, you know, around conservation or community projects, you always think you would think you know what they want, but you don't really. You actually got to sit and listen to what they want and what they need. Um, and it is all around making them do the work. It's not handouts. So, you know, all of our projects, it's making them do the work. So the reforestation project we did was we started the nurseries. We've got four now on the island. Um, they give, grow the trees to a certain height that the goats don't take them out. Um, and then the communities come and fetch um, the, the trees and they plant them in their areas. And it helps create a, a, a food source if it's fruit and the nut trees, because mangoes and cashew nuts are growing beautifully on here uh, and then also uh, other trees around fast growing trees that they can use for for uh, fuel um, but it is an island that is supported it's got a massive solar farm on it and the whole island itself has got uh, government solar on, on on the island as well and you completely forget i'm just going to go back to this image if you think the is the size of wales it's absolutely huge uh, then you consider Lake Malawi, it's absolutely massive. Um, so it's it's really up north, warm water throughout the year, no hippos, no crocos, no bulhazia, we test it. Um, and you forget that you're in an, on a lake and not on a beach. Um, because it's warm all the way here, so it's 20, between 24 and, 20 and 30 degrees, you can be on the winter safari in Zambia and you can be swimming and snorkeling at Lacoma when you, when you arrive here. Um, it's flat, um, fresh water, so kids love it. They can learn to sail or to snorkel. There isn't a bubble school that they can go and do. Um, it really is a stunning property. All the little fresh water, fresh um, water fish that is in the aquariums come from these great Rift Valley lakes that run, you know, down the eastern side of Africa. Um, because they were brother-in-laws, you'll see some symmetry in the room types between Tongavisi and Kaimawa, the standard rooms, the premier rooms with bunch pools, family houses on the beach, uh, sole use, as I said. Uh, we do only open 1st of April because the first three months of the year in Africa is very heavy rain season. So, and again, that follows the whole concept. But the high season um, sort of follows the safari season. But every room is different, built by the community, rock by hand. Um, some rooms have ball and cool bars, some have sunken bars, some have bars carved into the rocks. Again, spend some time on the website having a look. We also, under our agents portal, do a room description document of Kaimawa and of Tongvizi so that you can get some idea of them. Um, but again, skill centers, here are some recycled glass chandeliers. Um, cushion covers that come from the, uh, the center. Every, so activities, water skiing, tubing, we're we gonna be introducing paragliding, um, subbing, snorkeling or out of your room, fishing, 
um, sailing. Uh, there's so much uh, to do here. You can take a, an e-bike and go into the community, uh, immerse yourself in it, or visit this, uh, or you can take one of our tours. We do a dial boat that you can get in and you go around an island tour, which goes all the way around the island outside of the island. And you can snorkel and fish and then stop having your own private little lunch on an island, on a, on a beach, um, because they take the cooler boxes and the food with them. We've got a spa. Um, there's so much to do. And this is just some pictures of the skill centers um, that we, we, we have on the island. So yeah, you can engage as much as you want uh, with your, uh, the community development projects, traveling with a purpose. We do have, we belong to pack for a purpose, visit any schools, plant a tree, meet animal researchers, know that if you're staying with us, we are um, carbon neutral, or you're, so you're off, off, your carbon footprint is offset, uh, food from organic gardens. So all of that sort of falls into it. Um, this is just a snapshot of the auditor report. Uh, that we put into our presentation. I know it's small, but it gives you some idea of the massive impact we had in 2022. As I said, we we're about to sign off the 2023 uh, audited report, so we'll be producing a snapshot of that as well. And that's just some images of our conservation projects. Uh, we do have a little video that we can, we will provide you that shows you some of uh, it was like a little short documentary on the conservation projects. And if you need more imagery, we do have a whole Dropbox that's to, that is um, link that you can use to just get images of our conservation projects. And that's me. 